Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood to join you today for this period of Bible study. In today's lesson, I would like to discuss briefly the idea of giving. You know, in, as we come together to worship God every Lord's Day, then there are several acts of worship. We call them acts of worship, things we go through in order to worship God. We sing songs, we pray, we listen to the Word of God being preached and being read. We take of the Lord's Supper. But then one part of worship is also giving. It is a subject that oftentimes people don't want to listen to. We don't like the idea of being preached to about our giving because most of us do not give as probably as much as we should. And so we immediately feel a little guilty. Well, in some senses, that's not bad. We should feel guilty sometimes if we are not giving enough. You see, giving is part of God's command. It's part of God's commands, just as any other commands are. And so, therefore, it is a command that we must not ignore. We must not just overlook or forget about as if it's not important or we don't like to talk about it. We must talk about this. And it should not be a subject which is greatly fearful to us because, after all, God loves a cheerful giver. And we're going to be looking at primarily in three verses today, beginning in Second Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 6, going through verse 8. <clears throat> Notice what Paul said beginning in verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. So there are several things that Paul points out in these few verses. First, he points out the principle that if we reap, or we give bountifully, we will reap bountifully. In other words, God will bless you if you give for the right reason and the right amount. But we must be careful how we give. Paul said that God, we must not give grudgingly. That is, out of a sorrow or out of grief. It's not a something that you do because you feel like you have to do it. That you're required to do it necessarily as a Christian or that is an incline like an emission price to go to church. It's not an emission price to go to the church. It is not something you give because you have to. And it's not you not to feel compelled to give. You see, when you feel like it's a hardship or you're being compelled to give it, then giving becomes just another hardship that one must endure. Is your giving just another bill? You know, we all have many bills to pay on a regular basis. None of us, I suppose, like paying bills. We always would rather not to have those. Well, sometimes our giving to the Lord becomes just about like that. It's just another bill that we have to pay. And if you, that's what you're feeling is, then obviously it's impossible to give cheerfully. This verse points out that we should not give grudgingly because God loves a cheerful giver, which implies that God will only bless people if we give cheerfully. And that's something we need to keep in mind. Giving is not beneficial to us just because you give something or you give a large amount even. It all depends on the attitude with which you give. In verse 7, Paul says, Let us give as he purposes in his heart. To give with a purpose. 
is to give with thought and design. In other words, the giving which God requires must result from a settled conviction and a determined purpose. It's not just a casual decision or an occasional impulse. It's not something you do when you get to some church on Sunday morning and here comes the time to give and you pull out something out of your pocket and just whatever you happen to have handy at the moment. That is not purposeful giving. You see, purposeful giving comes from the heart. It is based on our perception of God's love and goodness. And you plan your giving, not giving just whatever is handy, but you plan on giving. That's what purposeful giving is all about. And unless we give with that kind of attitude, then how can we give as God really instructs? Paul continued his discussion of giving in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2. Noted what Paul says on that occasion to the same Corinthian church, a little bit earlier, of course. But Paul says, on the first day of the week, let one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. There are five questions answered in this one short verse. One is, when should we give? Paul said, we give upon the first day of the week. The Greek really said, the first day of every week. That's the way the New International or the New American Standard translated. Both of those translated like this, upon uh, every first day of the week. This definitely shows then that the early church habitually met for worship every first day of the week, and that they gave every first day of the week. It also implies, as we have point out other things, that the Lord's Supper was also done every first day of the week. Every week has a first day, and so if you meet for worship on the first day, then you meet every first day of every week. One of the purposes of meeting together was not only to take the Lord's Supper and hear preaching and so forth, but it was to give. He said, let each of you, that tells us who should give. Every person should give, not just the rich, not just the older ones who have got largely their bills paid or families reared and so forth, not just those who are not in debt. Everyone should give. Now, obviously, how much you could give depends on how much you make, what stage of life you're in, and so forth. Many times, yes, the older one might be able to give more than the younger ones, but even the younger ones should give something. Even children. I think even children should give something. You might say, well, they're not making anything, and that is true but it teaches them to give. I remember when I was just a little boy that we were, my family went to church every Sunday. And I knew we were to give something to the Lord every Sunday. Of course, I didn't have any money. I was not making anything. I was too young to make any money. But every day, every first day of the week, my father gave me just a little bit of money and I put it in the collection plate. You see, that taught me from a very early age that I was to give to the Lord. Giving to the Lord is a very important part of Christian living and our worship to God. So every one of us should give something, depending on how you can, of course. But what are we are to give? We are to lay something aside, that is, put it into the treasury. It is not something that you kind of just put in your mind, okay, I'm going to give this to the Lord. No, you put it aside. You give it. How? You give as you've been prospered. That is, whatever fruits you have. God doesn't require you to give some more than what you have. But he does require you to give something out of what you've been blessed with. And then he says why we are to give so that no collection should be made when I come. Now, in this particular case, God, I mean, Paul had told the Corinthians to be ready to give to help out the poor Christians in Judea. And so Paul was saying, you give, you take up the collection now, so that when I come, 
that does not have to be made. That tells us something about the purpose of giving. You lay it aside so that whatever needs come, then the money will already be there to help. So we give on the first day of the week as each one of us prospered, and we give as we purpose or cheerfully. And then in verse 6, we find the principle that we must not overlook. He who gives sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who gives bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, this verse is often misused. Many people want to take this gospel, I mean this verse, and use it to preach what we sometimes call the gospel of health and wealth. And they simply teach, to, uh, they seek to motivate people to give by saying this passage teaches you're going to receive far more than you give. And so if you need money to pay any kind of bill, then all you got to do is just give to the Lord, and God has promised you to give more in return. Sometimes they will call it seed money. Just as you sow a seed in the field, hoping to reap far more than the seed you sow, so it is with God. You give to the Lord, you give seed money to the Lord, and God will bless you a hundredfold or maybe even more. And they say that by, by encouraging to give, so because if you give more, then you can have more to spend upon your own consumption. You see, that's the implication, is the more you give to God, the more you have, and the more you have, then the more things you can spend for yourself. Well, that's not really the purpose of giving. Paul implies in verse 8, what the purpose of giving bountifully is all about. And it's not giving bountifully so you have a lot more to reap for yourself, but it says in verse 8, he had this, um, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Paul says you give bountifully, why? So that God will give back to you, and then as God gives back to you even more, then that means you'll have even more to give to others or for other good works. You see, when you give with a wrong attitude, that is with an attitude of covetousness, giving so you'll have more to buy your own luxuries or the things that you desire, then you're giving for the wrong reason, and God is not going to bless you. We give bountifully, and by really giving bountifully, God will reward us, but then also we use that reward for every good work. Not to spend the abundance upon yourself, but you spend it to help others. You spend it to help the work of the church, or to help the work of the Lord, or other good works that might be done. You see, here's the point. We give willingly and cheerfully because the more we give, the more God will enable us to give. Now keep in mind, though, that if we're talking about giving, we're not necessarily talking about money. You see, there's other ways that God may empower you to give. It may be time. It might be your talents. It might be other things that God has blessed you with. But whatever you have, we are to use that in service to God. But the point remains the same. The more we give, the more God will bless us to become even more useful. So while the point is often misapplied and encourages covetousness, the point is still the same. We must not be afraid that we will give too much. Because God has promised to bless the cheerful, liberal givers. The wise man wrote in Proverbs 22 in verse 9, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. Here is the principle that the wise man stated long ago, which Paul again states in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, that as we give, God will bless us. Jesus said in Acts 20 and verse 35, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Do we really believe that? I'm afraid that many times we, we like giving, I mean receiving a lot more than we do giving. 
we as Christians need to realize that giving is just a part of worship and and worship. I mean, living for God as any other command is. It's a very important command. But we also must never forget the principle that as we give, God will reward us. Which means that if we do not give, then God will not reward us. Indeed, many times, one reason why we may be so poor and we may have virtually nothing is because we refuse to give hardly anything to the Lord. We must not be afraid. We cannot outgive God. And we must trust God to give us the things that we need in this life. Do not seek to lay up treasures for yourself, but you lay up treasures in heaven. And God will reward us even more. I hope this will encourage you to look at your giving a little more so that we will give cheerfully and purposely and bountifully because God will reward us and God will bless the cheerful giver. Thank you for your attention today. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth and you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course, kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15. Arsradi Madurai 625016 Tamil Nadu For more details dial 9244204420 9244214421 God bless you The Church of Christ salutes you